Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining our International College um, Information Seminar. And today uh, we will talk about experience a sample lecture and talk to the program leaders. So when we talk, when we say that uh, you will be able to talk to the program leaders, which means I am the program leader, one of the program leader. And I am the associate head also from College of Business and Finance from Hong Kong New Space. I'm Dr. Solange Lang. And um, we also are very honored to invite our program leader in our partner university, which is um, University of Plymouth from the UK, uh, who is the associate head of Plymouth Business School International. And this is Dr. Richard Patman. And Richard, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, so today we will introduce you uh, four programs, and these are uh, International Tourism Management, International Tourism Management Cruise, Hospitality Management, and also Events Management. So all of them uh, are already accredited at HKCAAVQ, which means that um, they are all um, qualified as a HKQF Hong, uh, Hong Kong Qualification Framework Level 5 program. So uh, in other words, uh, you will be able to enjoy some kind of uh, benefits, uh, like uh, financial benefits, like um, you can enjoy the CEF funding, and also you can apply for grant loan, et cetera. And these are all the non-local programs. So perhaps, um, um, Richard, um, your turn to introduce Plymouth. OK, so um, good morning or good afternoon to those of you in Hong Kong who are watching our live stream. And thank you to Solange for the uh, introduction. So as um, Solange said, uh, I am. Uh, my name is Richard Parkman. I'm the Associate Head of School, Plymouth Business School for International. Um, and I am also the Associate Head for, um, sorry, I'm Associate Professor in Transnational Education and Management. And I am the Programme Leader for the Tourism, Hospitality and Events Management Programmes here um, in our partnership between HKU Space and uh, the University of Plymouth. So let me start by telling you a little bit about uh, why Plymouth programmes. So as you can see, uh, Plymouth, uh, we're in the UK and we're in the southwest uh, part of the UK, as you can see on the screen in the bottom left hand corner of the UK. And we, we work and live in an area that is uh, predominantly the tourism, hospitality and events centre of the UK. So uh, this is the area that most people in the UK come and enjoy their holidays and recreational time um, during the summer vacation periods in the UK, especially those who are not going overseas. So we are well placed um, to be living, working and researching um, the tourism leisure and uh, hospitality sector um, in the southwest as well as globally. So Plymouth has been ranked as 29th by the Guardian University League table for hospitality and tourism within the UK um, and we are 11th ranked 11th in the complete university guide um, out of 57 for hospitality, leisure, recreation and tourism. Um, we have been working with HKU Space in partnership for programs in tourism, hospitality, cruise management, and uh, events management for nearly uh, 12 years now. So we have a long-standing uh, partnership, and we have in the we have over I don't know 800 alumni over those 10, 12 years. So we have got a long-standing relationship, uh, a well. Uh, trodden path and a very respectful partnership. And I think it's one that uh, the students benefit from because we were able to work um, and uh, share our knowledge gained both in the UK and Europe, but also in Hong Kong and other parts of Asia. Plymouth University or University of Plymouth, we've got partnerships globally um, and of which HKU Space is one of our main and most respected partnership. But we have partnerships in um, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, China, 
mainland Europe and other parts of the UK as well. So we have access to uh, all parts of the globe where we can undertake research and generate knowledge and contemporary knowledge. Because knowledge. Uh, as you, I am sure you are all aware, is that the hospitality, tourism and events industry is uh, very fast paced. It's constantly changing and um, it probably doesn't go without mentioning that uh, in recent times, the global pandemic had a huge impact on the uh, industries around the world. So not only in Hong Kong, the UK, the US, Australia, New Zealand, they've all in, been impacted significantly by the global pandemic. However, whilst the picture was quite um, dark and gloomy, the, pic the horizon is looking more healthier. Um, so we are um, all now currently in the process of a bounce back and that the industries, tourism, hospitality, events are all generating momentum and gathering pace. And there's a huge shortfall now in knowledge, experience and expertise for people to go and work in these sectors. I think also the sector has um, um, benefited from uh, the, the the global pandemic, where the people have realized that we need to work differently, the offer needs to be different. So the industry is very enterprising and innovative in a way that is looking to reattract new um, employees, but also new customers. So again, we're part of that development. We, we're center of that. Um, around knowledge generation, entrepreneurship. So again, you're well placed if you choose to come and study at HKU Space with University of Plymouth in being part of that journey in the bounce back of the tourism, hospitality and events sectors. Okay, so uh, the last point on this slide is um, we are mainly face-to-face -face teaching. I just mentioned COVID, that was a bit of a challenge for everybody. Uh, we were unable to travel to Hong Kong, so a lot of the classes went to an online delivery. I'm pleased to say that I will be returning to Hong Kong in the coming months, in July, to restart our face-to-face -face teaching. So we should be um, returning to a normal service, uh, whatever that may be, where there will be uh, myself and colleagues other uh, professors, associate professors and lecturers traveling from the UK to teach face to face. However, we've learned lessons from COVID and actually face to face isn't only a mechanism. So we use a number of um, of. Uh, technologies now to support your learning. So we, we recognize that students uh, want more than one opportunity to listen to the lecturer. So some of our modules will have um, technology embedded where you're able to re-watch, re-listen, re-learn some of the um, knowledge that is being imparted. That doesn't say you can't turn up for classes. However, it does mean that you are able to re-watch, re-learn and maybe spend some of your own time where you can understand and uh, digest the knowledge from the classroom. So again, wh whilst there were negatives around COVID, there have been some positives and the adoption and embedding of technology is one of those. OK, thank you. Next slide. Um, so as it says, uh, the teaching team from the UK, um, we you will be taught by staff who teach here in Plymouth. We don't hire new or extra staff to come and teach in Hong Kong. So the people that teach the modules for the programs here will be the people who come and teach you in Hong Kong as well. Um, and these are the people. So um, going along in a clockwise uh, manner, we've got uh, Dr. Smita Tripathi. She uh, teaches the leadership modules. And then you've got myself, a handsome looking chap. Um, and then my colleague, Mandy Agat, who does things around service innovation um, and other areas. And then uh, Derek Shepard. Derek looks after things like business consultancy. 
Um, and then we have uh, Professor Sheila Agarwal, who incidentally runs the um, is the co-director of the Centre of Sustainability for Coastal Destinations. So she's working with the government, the UK government, um, around how and, and our medical school around how we can use tourism as a as a development tool for improving people's lives who, who live in deprived areas. Uh, again, in the Victorian days, Britain was had many coastal destinations for the Victorians to go and enjoy the seaside. Since um, you know modern times, job opportunities um, and the demise of the hospitality industry due to COVID has meant there's lots of poverty and deprivation. So Sheila's working with the UK government and other colleagues to try and find ways to increase and improve people's lives. So you can see that tourism isn't just about people going on holiday. It can be used to develop um, an infrastructure which can enhance the lives of people who live in these destinations. And then Natalie covers uh, events management. Uh, Dr. Wyman Lim, she is um, she has a number of roles. Um, she looks after our project modules, but she's also the program leader for the doctor, doctorate in business administration, which is a new program that we have just um, launched with HKU Space. So again, whilst the, you're looking at three or four programs, we have a portfolio of over 17 programs, an undergraduate and postgraduate um within hku space and then um dr katie anglis uh, who's our head of division as well she oversees a lot of our award a lot of our modules within the uh, events management program as well so these are just a snapshot of uh, eight people involved there are a few more um who, who you will see and be involved with depending on the program of study that you choose. So uh, again, um, I can assure you that uh, you will be taught by um, staff who deliver and design the programs as well. So it was us who designed the programs, we designed the content, we continually develop the content, and that's the information that we pass to you. Okay, next slide, please. So a brief um, introduction of the programs as you can see across the top in the blue those are the titles of the programs and if you come down uh, in a vertical uh, you can see there's some shared modules so let me just bring out one of the modules for you so leadership practice that isn't just about sitting in the classroom so some of you are will be young some of you will be a little bit older more mature some of you have experience of working so we draw on your own experiences um, in a classroom, so peer-to-peer -peer experience sharing. But we also do some out-of-the-classroom activity. So we have leadership um, practical days where you get you get out and put what you've learned into practice. That doesn't mean you haven't got a written assignment because you use the written assignment to then um, demonstrate that you've understood leadership and, and its components. Um, we talk about management, and as you can see, many of those modules or number of those modules have management embedded in them. So contemporary business management or crowd behavior and managing, um, event management. Uh, we all know what management is, but leadership is a little bit more of a vague concept. So we try to use this module um, with in conjunction with some of the other modules for you to try and understand what leading teams is all about and the, the nuanced um, components of being a good leader, because we all know how to manage. There's manuals that tell you how to be a manager, but leadership is about your own personality, your charisma. So again, it's not just about um, being stuck in a classroom, sat there listening to a lecture. We do inquire you require you to be participatory um, where we have these activities. So uh, as you can see, um, my research area is the cruise industry. Uh, I'm very well connected with the uh, global cruise industry. I work closely with the likes of P&O, Q&R, Princess Cruises, Royal Caribbean. And also we have good connections with the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal. So we do some activities or previously have done some activities with the cruise terminal. Um, and also cruise ships when they come in, because cruise ships are floating hotels. More than that, they're floating resorts now. So on board a cruise ship, hospitality, tourism, 
and events management all take place when people are taking a vacation. And again, cruise is a key industry and a key sector that is contributing to the development of parts around the world. It doesn't go without its own challenges because there's sustainability, environmental concerns and climate issues. But again, as a, um, as a, as a number of programs, we do look at these uh, issues um, that are being raised within the sectors of tourism, hospitality and events. And then finally, you have a project. It's an independent project, which you'll be uh, guided. And it's about finding a topic of your own choice uh, within the parameters of tourism and hospitality, where you will be guided to research a question and you will deploy the mechanisms and techniques of research and analysis and drawing some conclusions. But that um, is sort of towards the end of your programme and it's, uh, it's a, it's a sizable piece of work. Um, but again, it's to help you understand some of the challenges that the industry is faced. And as you, as the managers and the future of this industry will be able to take forward. Okay, so on. Um, teaching and assessment modes, uh, everything's taught in English. And as I've just said, uh, we don't just have um, uh, the traditional classroom uh, lecturer and students listening. We have guest speakers, seminars, field visits, simulation games, workshops, and our assessments are based around the traditional reports, essays, but also presentations, case studies, consultancy projects where you work with real life businesses to deal with their problems. We don't have any examinations. Uh, we may have a, a, a test, but it is just that, a test. It's not an examination. So all our work, all our assessments are based on um, um, coursework and it's the application of theory to develop competent practitioners. So what we're looking for is that when our graduates leave and pass over the stage, in for graduation, you have the skills and tools to be employed. Okay, thank you. Uh, as I just said, the curriculum emphasizes on its pract practicability or practicality, sorry. Um, so again, it's about uh, developing you as well-rounded operators, well-rounded managers of the future. So we want you to sort of face the challenges that the industry is facing. So when you leave us in two, three years time, that you're prepared for the workplace and you are able to contribute to the sectors of tourism, hospitality and events, because as I've said, you are the future of the industry. And it's gonna be this what you bring in your future careers that will help develop the sectors in the countries and regions that you uh, eventually find yourself living. I suppose the other thing is interesting is that tourism, hospitality and events is our global. They're not just Hong Kong or not just in Plymouth. You can work in these organizations and business around the world. I've recently come back from Dubai where I was doing some work for the government there on hospitality, tourism and events programs. Um, and again, so there was, a, there was, I was actually speaking to students from uh, Hong Kong there as well. So again, um, by getting one of our degrees, it means you are um, transportable, you're, um, you're flexible, you can move and work wherever you want in the world. If you want to stay in Hong Kong, that's great. But if you want to go to the US, your program will, will, um, will allow you to be able to operate in the US, the UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. So these are um, um, give you the core competencies to be able to work in these sectors anywhere in the world, okay? We've talked a little about the Leadership Day. So there's some examples of that. So it's a fun day. As you can see, all those happy, smiling people. Everybody gets a little bit nervous about it, but it's uh, it's good fun. You work as teams um, and you get to go outside, get the lovely fresh air and and uh, learn while doing, which I think um, is, a, is, 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 is a key component. We've talked about some of the business strategies, uh, some of the uh, assessments, and previously we've had business and consultancy case studies where we looked at the Kaitak Cruise Terminal and the director there provides uh, a brief, um, saw some problems that they need addressing, so you will go away in your teams and work through some of those problems and present the findings. Okay. 
Again, another example, visits to hotels. <clears throat> okay, we've talked about that. Um, so where do you, you choose the, these, why do you choose these top degrees, degree, degree programs over others? Um, so if you study at the University of Plymouth, um, you can actually come and study here for a short period of time. We're currently in the, at the present working with a number of students who a year or two years ago were sat where you are, um, and they're now preparing to come and study here in Plymouth for three months. So you uh, you don't pay any extra tuition fees. The tuition fee is the same as uh, what you'd be charged at HKU space for your modules, for your program. But you can come to Plymouth. Um, we have a full team that will support and help you around um, traveling, arriving in the UK, getting to Plymouth. You're providing accommodation, your timetable, uh, orientation, induction, but you get to come to Plymouth, study with students who are studying here in Plymouth as well. So it broadens your international exposure. You can meet new friends, new friends for life, um, and, and be exposed to the, um, the UK and the Plymouth culture. And also, you're a bit closer to other parts of uh, Europe. France is about 90 miles away. Um, we've got Scotland, Ireland, Wales, London is three and a half hours on the train. So there's lots of opportunities for while you're here during that period, as well as your studies, to combine some cultural uh, exposure as well. OK, so um, the next bit is for me to um, just give you a sort of a, a 10 minute taste of uh, some of, of what a lecture is like. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, I don't know if you can see it because everything's blank. Can you see it, Solange? Not yet. It's not sharing. Can you share it from your side? Uh, the previous um, yeah. slide, okay. So please wait a moment. Apologies, technology. Yeah. Um, can you see it now? No? No. Okay, share screen. How about this one? That's it, yeah. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. So um, this is just a short, um, introduction to uh, authentic leadership. As I've just mentioned previously, management is a very much a um, topic that as students, you would have been well-versed in, you would have read, experienced, but leadership is a little bit more of a vague concept. Um, so this is sort of look at what we mean by authentic leadership. Okay, if you can move to the next slide, you can go to the, so, um, this is the an actual session that I use, um, and the sort of the session is made up of looking at leadership, authenticity, and emotional intelligence, thoughts, ideas, and some videos. Uh, we're not going to do any videos uh, this morning, um, but again, it's about looking how Hollywood has uh, been able to capture and explain leadership in itself. So um, if you decide to come and study with uh, HKU Space in Plymouth, you will uh, be able to um, experience some of these videos. We use them as discussion points, which takes me back to an earlier point is that it's not just one way. We do have an interaction around discussing what leadership is. Leadership is an evolutionary activity. It develops, and we've all got an opinion of what leadership is. And it's about, and nobody's wrong, but it's about looking at what are your perceptions, what, how are you, how do you view leadership through your lens? 
We also look at leadership, sorry, excellent, leadership change and transition. We do some practical exercises um, about, and then the learning. We also look at um, things like derail leaders. So when leaders go wrong, um, I don't want to get political, but if you look at the world today, um, we have different views on leaders globally. So again, it's about looking at when do leaders change from doing good to doing different. Okay, thank you. Um, so as I said, leadership is a very concept, unlike, um, unlike management. Um, leadership um, is not clear. Um, there are over 122,000 books on leadership on Amazon, and I've read every one of them, so I can be able to give you the lectures. Um, quite often, this is changing now, um, but traditionally, it's been very much a Western mindset with an obsession with attributes, traits, and competencies. Again, this is starting to change uh, because obviously with the advent of um, the globe becoming smaller, we don't rely on everything coming from Harvard Business Review anymore. And there's a, a global movement, not only in people working in sectors such as tourism, hospitality events, but also academics. So we've got people coming from different parts of the world, such as Asia, who are now collaborating and sharing and uh, writing and researching leadership in different cultures. Now, these different cultures um, are um, shared around the world. Um, as it says, Harvard Business Review cases and research dominate business school teaching. Again, this is starting to change. We're not completely uh, obsessed with Harvard Business School, um, but we are. But those are where the initial concepts and theories were predicated. So we're now trying to apply new knowledge to different cultures as well and to see how leadership, different styles of leadership can be deployed. And this is really important because obviously uh, the global workforce, if you think of someone like Marriott, they don't just employ Americans anymore. They employ people from all around the world, whether it's from India, China, Australia, Europe, UK. There's a, these companies are truly multinational. So again, as leaders, we need to understand what the expectations are of our employees, as well as our peers, and as well as our managers. So again, it's not straightforward. Um, so as it says here, so we talk about some leadership quotes. So the first one is from Gandhi. Um, there is, there's enough in the world for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. Okay, so I think that's the uh, one of the challenges um, around uh, leadership um, is that there's enough of what we want for everybody to go around. But if we are greedy, um, we, we may need to think about leadership differently. So this one uh, is a Taoism approach to leadership. Leadership is like water. It is altruistic because it nourishes. It is modest and humble because it always takes the lowest ground. It is adaptable because it can stay in a container of any shape. It is clear and transparent. So again, I'm not going to spend time with you guys um, to discuss what this works, but it's to sort of suggest that leadership is about doing the, the right thing to your followers. So we talk about um, when I was young, when I was a lot younger, when I was first studying leadership, it was always thought do to people what how do to people how you would want to be treated but i've changed since that where it should be really be about treat people the way they want to be treated so that's a that's a slight nuance and it's challenging for leaders because you may have a a view of the world through your culture through your own development is that you view the way people should be treated but that may not may not always be the way they want to be treated so the challenge is which we try to work through in this module is how to identify the way people want to be treated 
Okay. And uh, one which is a little bit funny, the guy here is a guy called Larry Ellison. There's a, there's a textbook. It's a, it's a little bit older now, uh, but Larry Ellison, so, and it's titled, The Only Difference Between God and Larry Ellison is That God Doesn't Think He's Larry Ellison. Now, Larry Ellison is the uh, owner of Oracle. So I think when I was writing this, I was thinking we could change this to Elon Musk now, couldn't we? Um, <laughs> But it, it is about people become so powerful that they feel like they have a godlike status. And we were talking the other day uh, with some colleagues is that, you know, if we look around the world, we've got Bezos, we've got Musk, we've got um, Tim Cook from Apple. These people control the world. Their, their, their financial wealth is enormous. They, they've got more money than some countries have got and i think at one point apple had more money than the whole of the us so these people are, are really in control but again it's about their sort of leadership style and we're you know part of the course is about thinking about ethical leadership as well you know um but again more things to think about so um next slide please so a brief history around um so leadership. So leadership is, is, has been around for time and memoriam. We've sort of looked back to the sort of the Greek philosophers and the effective leaders of philosophers being kings. Um, and, and we talk about uh, leaders being strong. They tend to be male. They tend to be handsome. Um, you know, the great defender with the shield and the sword. And if you read and watch movies of the sort of medieval times and beyond, the leaders were always strong warriors. Uh, we don't think of leaders like that anymore, or maybe we do, I don't know. Um, but we think leaders have a, are a bit more sophisticated and a bit more refined. So if we look at Weber, so Weber talks about effective leaders having charisma, a special spiritual power or personal quality that gives them influence over many people. Now, again, I got sort of quite a good exercise around looking at how charisma is developed and who has charisma. Um, but what is charisma? Well, charisma talks about people's character and characteristics. And if you think about leaders, those are those people that uh, we like, and we don't know why we like them. You know, in the UK, Boris Johnson, without getting political, Boris Johnson has a huge following. People like him because he's a bumbling guy, um, never really always makes get things wrong, says things that are incorrect. Um, but people like him. So he has a charisma. Doesn't mean he's any good, but it means he's got charisma. Um, we probably can talk a little bit about Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump has huge following. Whatever you but believe in your own political views but Donald Trump has a huge following but it's all based around charisma he's be able he's able to deliver the message that people want to hear he taps into their emotions so again um we can look at some other ones so McGregor effective leaders understand the human side of enterprise uh, and block talks about effective leaders that empower others. OK, so in the workplace, those of you who, who have got experience of working, it's about not always having the autocratic leader. Sometimes we talk about stewardship and servant leadership, where the leaders allow you as the followers to make decisions on what they do. Um, um, I forgot the guy's name from South Africa, the president of the United of, of South Africa, the first black president, Nelson Mandela. It's my age, I, I apologize. But Nelson Mandela talked about uh, citizens and the population being like sheep, not in a negative way, but he's talking about him being the shepherd who sort of sends them on their path and then he keeps them on the straight and narrow so they don't deviate where they're unguided. He's just there to guide them, but it's they, it's the, the, the population or the followers who are making the decisions and he's just making sure that they keep them on a straight path. I thought a really good way to think about it. Okay, next slide, I'm conscious of time. Okay, so again, we've looked at some, so more around the sort of theoretical models. So the evolution of leadership thinking. Um, we talked about, we'll talk about great man theory. I've already briefly touched on it. Great man talks about kings, queens, warriors. Um, and this came up, 
by Carlisle Thomas in 1841. So leadership has been written about for hundreds of years, if not thousands. Uh, but this was sort of the, the, the start of it really being documented where people were testing it and people were trying to experience and understand what makes a leader, what makes a follower. Um, then we sort of moved into sort of trait theory. Um, trait theory was uh, looking that a numerous um, scholars have written about there's a set of traits that people must have. They must be strong, good communicator, good motivator, good influencer, risk taker. So they say, well, you can only be a leader if you've got these 13, 14 criteria. Um, it was later developed into what's called the big five, which is behavioral theories. Um, which was developed by, um, again, a few other uh, scholars, but Blake and Mouton developed the managerial grid, where depending on where you plotted on the managerial grid through style, um, means whether you were a good leader or indifferent. So we talk about impoverished, and it talks about being people-centered or productivity-centered. So if you're focused on getting the job done, you would forget about the people. Whereas if you then spend too much time worrying about the people, you didn't get the job done. So it's about trying to find that happy medium. So that's the sort of the behavioral theory approach. And now today we find ourselves in the relational theory, uh, which is predicated around things like uh, servant leadership, which we talked about, transformational leadership and emotional intelligence. So it's this notion of trying to understand what a follower and how they want to be treated okay um so relational theory again this what just talked about is the leader follower export move next to the next slide please we can go again next slide so some of the bit so we talk about relational le leadership. So some of the basic principles and propositions is that emotions and relationship leadership is predicated on this thing called trust. Again, I've got a good uh, game I would play, but I can't play it now. But trust is more important than style because style is situational. So trust is conditional. So there is nobody in your life who you can trust unconditionally apart from one person there's only one person in your life that you have unconditional trust that is your mum not even your dog maybe your dog my dog maybe i got so trust is conditional it's not your best friend it's not your husband it's not your wife it's not your cousin it's not your sibling trust is conditional because if you lend your friend $50 and they say they're going to pay it back to you tomorrow and they don't pay it back to you, the trust is gone. You never give them a $50 again. They have to rebuild it. So we talk about trust. It arrives on foot and leaves on horseback. Okay, so trust is very much conditional. So, yeah, yeah. So um, there is a trust equation. T equals C plus R plus I over S. Very complicated. Um, so this is the um, this is the, the the equation. So trust is developed over an individual's credibility, their reliability, their intimacy, and their self orientation. So it's about being credible, qualifications, experience, reliable, doing what you say you're going to do, time and time again. Being open and honest with your followers. And the self-orientation is about not having an ego, not turning into Elon Musk or turning into Donald Trump. <laughs> OK, I think I might have gone over time, but I think um, that's a sort of snapshot. If you do join, um, that's some of the stuff you can expect to explore. And I hope that was uh, informative for you. Yes, thank you, Richard. Um, can you see um another purple now? Okay, yeah. So um, so let me continue um the rest. So uh, we just mentioned about the snapshots of the um 
Thomas Fletcher. So uh, students, you may uh, think about uh, in the university in a bachelor degree program, um, the lecture or the teacher, teaching material is quite different from what the uh, what you experience in your associate degree or in your higher diploma programs, because uh, you are teaching um, by uh, some um, university lecturers uh, who are professors or who are assistant professors in different fields, and they are um, doing their own research uh, in their own area as well. So that's why you can expose to different expertise um, uh, who will teach in university of Plymouth, and at the same time, you will also they will also teach you in Hong Kong at Hong Kong U Space. So that is the beauty of the of our programs. Um, so in this coming few slides, I would like to uh, mention to you that uh, actually in our program, we would like to prepare you um, to uh, to to polish your um, skills and also knowledge before you graduate. What does what does it mean? It means that uh, we will try to prepare you um, to join different placement opportunities or internship or even mentorship programs um, during your study period, so as to enhance your career development and also your employability. So that is very important because our program is only takes only eighteen months. Um, during this eighteen months, how can you enrich your own self um, in order to um, enhance your employability? That is very important because you need to stay uh, and remain to be very competitive um, among the graduates. So that's why if uh, you will be given a lot of chances um, to visit and also to um, expose yourself uh, and then to listen to different guest speakers um, and you can expose to different associations as well which is uh, they are very important in the industry so that's why i will encourage all of you uh, to stay connected um, to different organizations to expose to yourself um, to different uh, people as well because these are the network. These are very important assets to you uh, when you start to build your career in the future. So um, in a, it means that uh, in the future, if you are given these kind of opportunities to join different events or to join different activities, uh, be proactive, be proactive um, because uh, you will be benefit a lot. So um, maybe you wonder, whether uh, you are qualified to join our program. Um, here are the list of um, minimum entry requirements that uh, we need from you um, in order to apply for our program. And this can be uh, this already listed in our website. But um, bear in mind that if you are not students from tourism, hospitality, or event management programs, um, then you need to take and pass additional module um, before you start the program. What does it mean again? It means that uh, if, let's say, if you're studying a business management uh, associate degree or business management um, high diploma program uh, from Hong Kong Space or from other institution, you need to study uh, one, at least one module uh, in our advanced diploma program during the summer um, before you start the September um, uh, semester. So in this case, you need to pay extra um, in order to join our program beforehand. So uh, for details, you can contact us um, if you are not certain about uh, how many modules you need to take before you start the uh, program. And at the end of the day, after you finish the 18 month program, uh, if everything is uh, very smoothly done, then you will be awarded um, this certificate parchment from University of Plymouth. So here, I would like to um, uh, uh, alert you that uh, this is the exact parchment that you will receive uh, when you graduate with Universal Plymouth Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Business um, as the awarding body, and then your name and also your program with your honors degree uh, classification. So it is exactly the same as what you will receive in Plymouth while you are studying in Plymouth. So it means that no matter where you study, in Hong Kong or in Plymouth or in other uh, partner university uh, partner programs. So it means that you will receive a University of Plymouth parchment. There is no Hong Kong use space, no mention about Hong Kong use space or Hong Kong in this parchment. Um, although uh, in our in the transcript, um, there will be some mentioning about uh, okay, this degree program is actually studied in Hong Kong use space and with us. But um, for uh, what I want to stress is that the academic standard 
of this program after you complete is exactly the same as what you will uh, receive in uh, Plymouth in the UK. So it is exactly the same. So um, the assessment are the same and also the academic standard are the same. So uh, so don't worry about the academic standard, whether it is uh, not a good program or not. So uh, trust um, the, the standard of the university. This is a very popular university that you can trust on. And for when you complete your um, program, then uh, you will receive a notification to attend the graduation ceremony. So you can choose either you, you can attend in Hong Kong or you can attend in Plymouth. So uh, we are very welcome for students to, to go abroad um, to attend the ceremony in Plymouth as long as you can uh, inform us in advance. So after your completion of the program, then you can go ahead uh, to uh, articulate to higher degree, which is the master degree or which is the postgraduate diploma with Hong Kong space. And if you decide to um, continue your study in uh, for a master degree, then we will have a master of science, tourism and hospitality management with University of Plymouth. And because you are our graduate, um, then you will have a 10% alumni discount on the tuition fee. So that is very, very attractive, honestly. Um, so that's why uh, you actually can proceed to a, uh, to a higher level academically uh, after you finish your bachelor. Maybe you can think about um, this um, postgrad study uh, after a few years time, but as long as you graduate with us, then you will enjoy, be able to enjoy this alumni discount. Um, so that is about uh, the industry prospect and job opportunities. Uh, because of time constraints, I will go through very quickly on what uh, we, uh, we can offer to you. So uh, if you go to um, Hong Kong Tourism Board website, uh, you can see that actually Hong Kong is preparing itself to bounce back for the tourism industry. And when we talk about tourism industry, it usually includes some kind of attractions like uh, Ocean Park, like uh, Disneyland, or like uh, some, um, some museums. And we also mentioned about some arts as well, because uh, in Hong Kong, uh, like the Art Basel in Hong Kong, which is very famous. Um, so uh, we are looking at uh, how arts um, in Hong Kong or in the region, uh, uh, so we can attract uh, tourists to come to experience us in Hong Kong. Um, of course, dining is uh, very important, shopping, nightlife, and don't forget outdoors. So if you can experience um, the outdoors in the Lantau or in the Sai Kong area, then you uh, definitely know what I mean for great outdoors. So in Hong Kong, it's very easy to, and accessible to go to experience um, outdoors. So uh, our tourists are also attracted um, and uh, our Hong Kong Tourism Board are also uh, selling and promoting Hong Kong outdoors to the tourists. Culture, very unique. And cruise, as uh, Dr. Richard Patman mentioned about cruise tourism. So uh, again, we have our Kai Kai tourism, uh, the cruise terminal, and all the big cruise are coming back to Hong Kong. And uh, uh, and so that's why uh, you can um, really feel that uh, cruise tourism is coming, and then you can uh, try to think about our cruise management program. Because again, as Richard, Dr. Richard Patman mentioned, uh, after you study our program, you do not, you, you, uh, you are not just um, enjoying job opportunities in Hong Kong locally, but you can experience and also work in different countries and in different parts of the world. Um, so that's why it, 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 this is a very important message to come across to you. Um, again, Greater Bay Area. If you um, heard about news about Greater Bay Area, Taiwan, okay, so it means that uh, there are job opportunities there. And there are many, uh, plenty of jobs and also plenty of uh, um, lifestyle uh, or tourism attractions in the Greater Bay Area. So um, in this case, I really uh, would like you to think about whether you are interested to join the workforce because these are very uh, attractive to me and hopefully to you as well. Um, so not just talk about cruise, but also events. 
So event tourism is another highlight uh, for Hong Kong Tourism Board. Uh, if you can see these kind of uh, photos, you will see you you will know that uh, actually Hong Kong is not just mentioning about the cultural festivals uh, like the Bun Festival uh, in the in the coming uh, month. Uh, also, the Rugby Sevens we just experienced in March, and also uh, we can have the Wine and Dine Festival in November, Winterfest in December. All these are job opportunities to you. Okay, as the event planner. So uh, again, I will highly encourage you if you are uh, interested in event planning and event management, then you can study our event management program. And event tourism is not just about um, leisure tourism, leisure events, but uh, we also talk about MICE events, which is uh, meetings, convention, uh, exhibition, and incentive travel. So uh, again, Hong Kong is worth meeting. Uh, Hong Kong is an events capital, so you again you you experience different job opportunities in the event industry. So opportunities, as I've said, no matter you are working in, you wish to work in hotels, in the event sector, travel and tourism, there will be plenty of of, of job opportunities opportunities not just in Hong Kong but uh, outside Hong Kong as well. And uh, these are some kind of um um some names or some position names that you can uh, browse around uh, in order to search for jobs in the future. But um, definitely uh, different positions will have different skill sets and knowledge. And uh, if you study our programs, you will be exposed to different um, um, uh, job nature of different job positions so that you can again think about your career uh, ahead. Okay. So um, in Hong Kong space, we actually work with different partners in Hong Kong and also beyond Hong Kong. And uh, we have uh, developed different uh, partnership with them as well. And lastly, financial assistance. Um, I understand that uh, uh, a lot of you are fresh graduates uh, from um, different institutions and our tuition fee is actually very affordable. Um, it is the whole program for 18 months is only 105,000 Hong Kong dollar for the entire program. And uh, for those who have uh, financial difficulties, uh, no worries, you will receive um, some uh, entry scholarship or uh, some government scholarship as well. And if you have not yet uh, reimbursed your CEF funding, continuing education fund, Hong Kong Gate Chi then uh, there will be maximum 25,000 subsidies from Hong Kong government. And uh, we also, uh, Hong Kong Space also uh, gives you a few uh, opportunities to join or to apply for our scholarship and bursaries. Um, so next page shows you some um, uh, entry scholarship. And for details, you may visit our website or you can contact our staff for more details. So no matter you are from Hong Kong Space or from other institution, you will be given a chance to uh, receive our scholarship as long as you fulfill some very uh, easy uh, um, entry requirement. And for those who are uh, who are mature students, who have work experience, uh, no worry, you can also uh, enjoy our scholarship. And this is called Return to Learning Scholarship. And uh, as I've said, uh, Hong Kong Space International College also actually offer a number of scholarships for you to apply. Um, again, these are the uh, information that you can consider. And these are the very uh, latest uh, presentation ceremony. Okay, so uh, if you wish to apply for our program, these are the cost code uh, for uh, application. And don't uh, forget that these are all QF level five uh, program and they are all accredited program by HKCAAVQ, which means that when you complete the program, actually you, your uh, qualification is actually equal to a local degree. Okay, in Hong Kong. Okay, so uh, if you wish to get in touch with us, um, Dr. Richard Patman email is here, and also my email is here as well. So uh, please feel free to ask any questions, and also please feel free to contact us if you have any questions after this seminar. So thank you for your attendance, and if you have any questions, do ask us. Thank you.